Hi folks, welcome to a chip break on quality control process. This is the current version of the quality control worksheet that we use for making our Tormach fixture plates. What looks like a simple part, a relatively simple part, there is a ton that goes into both making these, but also ensuring that you make a great product along the way. Rather than walk you through the current version, we need to rewind, go back to the beginning, walk through the versions to how we got here, including uh, a pretty awesome guest appearance from Jay Pearson at Pearson Work Holding. Uh, we did a tour of Pearson. It's been really inspirational, continues to be inspirational for me as I run this business and as an entrepreneur. Ready for version one? This is version one. You gotta start somewhere. I knew we were gonna put serial numbers on the plates. We didn't actually for the first uh, few of them, but I wanted to serialize them because you need to document this process and build this database. I knew I wanted to measure thickness along certain points, and I just thought, okay, let's look at the visual for defects. Let's check the bore diameters. That's obviously very important for the fixture plate. Check the threads check along all four edges. I did that because it's easy to not do that. It's not as doesn't jump out at you in the same way a defect may be on the top face of it. And then I thought, yeah, who checked it? Putting your name on something I think helps you take pride in it. And look, let's be honest, make sure you don't cut corners when your name is associated with it. If there's a problem, you can come back and uh, that's an important amount of accountability. So how do we go from this to version two? Easy. And I call this site a force multiplier. Upwork.com, I use it pretty darn frequently. I've got about six active jobs right now. Everything from graphic design to CAD work to CAM work to research to consulting, it's phenomenal. You can hire folks anywhere uh, in the world, US or overseas, who are very qualified and are good fit. And it takes some fit. We've gone back and forth with a lot of different freelancers, and I've found some that I have a pretty good working relationship with. And to give you some idea, I've probably spent about $100 to go from this version two all the way to version six. That's not a lot of money in my opinion for how good this looks, and that's something that I can roll into or amortize into the next quality control sheet for the next product. Version two, not really anything more than a better looking version one. Version three, we've got some new stuff. First of all, in version two, I was thinking lean sometimes means less. It doesn't mean less. Uh, what I had been thinking was, oh, we can get two pages on one sheet, we can cut them in half with a paper cutter, nice and you know, uh, quick and small, no. There's a lot of information that we need to put onto this sheet and needs to be organized in an easy manner to understand. So back to one full size, I added the star and the idea was you would write that in for the thickness and then rather than measure thickness, we would measure relative variance along the 10 points, which is that's what I really care about. How much variance is there? Added height, added width, added some visual defect checks because guess what? What does visual defect check even mean? Uh, that's one of the things I've learned is this sheet fails if it's not obvious. Anyone who has experience in a machine shop or assembling products ought to be able to walk up to this sheet and by and large say, mm, I get it, I understand how to go through this. So adding visual defect checks for specific areas, uh, allowing the user to check along, that makes a lot of sense. Giving some direction on these specific things. What are What is a bore check? What is a thread check? adding the date that's done, and then we make three different models of these fixture plates. So having one for the 440, having one for the 770, and one for the 1100. Version four, what happened here? Move the model to the top, I, you know, quite silly in hindsight. Some of these things are ridiculous, by the way, in hindsight, but that's, hey, that's, that's well, come along for the journey. Uh, that makes a complete sense. I fixed the, uh, clarified the top left with a TL, top of plate so it's clear which side of the plate you're measuring from or the orientation of it. Move the instructions into the header bar and an italics for each of these. And that was it. And I, I honestly, at this point, I thought, hey, this is pretty good. So I sent it off to Jay Pearson. I said, Jay, would you be willing to take a look at this? Give us some feedback on video. Take a look. Thanks, John. Well, right off the bat, I knew that I was gonna like this because the name of the file was Quality Control Sheet V4. That tells me that you had at least three other versions in which you were making improvements. That is Kaizen, that is continual improvement. That's a core principle to lean. We're gonna be talking about lean. Now, there's eight ways that we track and identify and look out for in lean. We're gonna be talking about mostly defects in the context of a quality control sheet, but let me read you the others because we'll start to see some of these enter into this situation. So, 
Number one, overproduction, it's the worst. Then there's transportation, excess inventory, defects, overprocessing, wasted motion, waiting, and unused employee genius. When we sit down to do this, we want to not only find defects in our production, but defects in the way that we go through this. This is why you're sending me this, this to, to look over. Now, I eliminated some, some chance for errors to occur, human errors. We know there's only three models of Tormach machines, so I'm just gonna type them in here and we're gonna circle them. Serial number, that's good. We'll come back to that later. Now, the thickness, what you did here is great perfectly intuitive, makes sense to me. The one thing that I changed is instead of writing down the points here of what the surface plate or uh, height gauge says, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just check boxes of the deviation or the variance from the original top left inspection point. What this does is two things. Number one, yes, it tracks if we have an issue. For example, if this plate were a little bit thicker on one end, five, six, and seven would be thicker. Four, eight, nine, and 10 would be in between, and one, two, and three would be dead on. So we would start to see a trend up here on this control sheet. As long as that trend falls within the acceptable tolerance, that's okay. But if we started seeing that these numbers are jumping around, zero, plus six, minus four, zero, minus two, plus six, plus six, zero plus four, that tells us we either got a really messed up plate that's warped or maybe our inspection equipment is not doing what it's supposed to. Maybe there's dirt on the surface plate. Maybe the stylus is just bouncing around. So then we can identify issues even in our inspection process. The worst thing that we can do is to ship a bad product to a customer. The second worst thing we can do is ship good product with an incorrect quality control sheet. That doesn't put any more confidence in the customer's mind if we can't fill out a quality control sheet correctly. So at this point, I would circle up everyone in the company that is familiar with this process and I would embrace that employee genius. And I would say, here's the deal. Um, Noah, you go look at the surface plate, make sure it's clean. Um, I, John, will inspect the program and the inserts and, and all the machine-related stuff. Um, maybe the material's bad, so the two of you, go look at material, look at anodizing, we gotta figure this. Then, then now we're not waiting on one person or essentially the customer is not waiting on one person to figure out the issue. Jumping right in, all heads in it. Some of the best ideas we've had around here are from the proverbial low guy in the totem pole because he was given the opportunity to have input in it. So, the next part, height and width, I might, I don't know if that's gonna be inspected, I'll leave it up to you, but I would prefer maybe a chart, the 44770, 1100, just has a chart of what the height and width should be. I don't know if it's that important to inspect. The next thing is I rearrange some of these boxes. What we don't wanna do is over produce products because there was a defect. So we don't wanna make 50, find out that 50 were bad. Now we're overproducing and doing rework or whatever. So we don't wanna pass on defects forward. So these bore check, thread check, and four edges check need to be inspected before we go to anodize because then we're putting more money towards the process. And if it's wrong going there, it's definitely gonna be wrong coming back. So it's logical that we do this before we send it out. With bore check, these were empty, but I would have put in um, go and no-go checks for thread check. Make sure the threads are clear of debris and the, the fastener goes in smoothly. And then like you had the four edges check, make sure it's machined, consistent chamfers, no sharp edges. Those are all good. Once that passes, then we can file this. Then it goes to anodize, comes back, and we'll complete the final inspection, which is a visual inspection. Then from there, we check the anodizing whole ID finish, kind of look, make sure that nothing got banged around. And the last thing that I added was overall excellent. This isn't quite trackable, quantifiable, qualifiable, but it puts in your mind and in the customer's understanding that we are here to make excellent products. For example, I always say around the company that anyone can make a product, a few can make good products, even less can make great products, but the upper tier can make excellent products. Those stand out. 
Pearson Work Holding wants to be a company known for making excellent products. So it's a mindset that it's, it could be better. Maybe it's a John Grimson thing, you know? It's not perfect, but we strive for perfection. Great, you've made a name for yourself. So we like, I just wanna add that overall excellent. If you can check that with a clear conscience, then you're doing something right. And finally, check by name and date, always a good thing. Let's go back to that serial number and trend thing that I mentioned. If a product got into a customer's hands that was defective, we would probably get a call. If it happens a few times, we can get the serial numbers and we can track the lots. And for example, we can find that maybe the threads, the common complaint was that some threads weren't there or they were messed up. We go through and we pull this quality control sheet that we have a copy of, the customer has a copy of, and we can see what are the variations, what are the trends that change during this. Well, for example, the last three ones, we didn't send to Columbus, uh, Columbus anodizing, oh, Zanesville plating didn't do it. We sent it to WTF anodizing and they keep screwing up threads. Well, they do things fast and cheap, but you ain't gonna get the quality. Columbus does it fast, but not cheap. Zanesville plating takes a long time, but it is cheap, you know? And so you, you, there's variation, you have to manage your vendors in the same way. A quality control sheet is as important to the customer or probably less important than it is to the company or the producer because we're the ones that this is gonna reveal our defects in which we fix those processes, whether in-house or at a vendor's place. Those are my thoughts, hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out to Jay. Jay, thank you. One of the things I like about Jay is even working with him is lean. He's not the kind of guy where he wants to ramble. He gets to the point. And as an entrepreneur, sometimes that's just so it's so great. Yeah, yeah. I've had a beer with him and it's it's a normal conversation as well. But I just gotta say, Jay, thank you. And what's it's almost embarrassing because some of the things Jay said are so good that you're embarrassed you didn't think of them yourselves. But that's what's awesome about making it better. So again, Jay, thank you. Who wants to see version five? Well, you actually already saw it. Jay took the time to actually mock up version five on his own. Here is that version after I sent it to my uh, Upwork graphics design guy. And by the way, video, you know, that video from Jay was so helpful to communicate. We use video all the time to communicate with graphic designers, folks on Upwork and our customers. It's very helpful. Again, most of what we see here that's new is from Jay. We did add this sort of new section where this is the first area is completed when it comes off the machine and then a lot of this other work is done after it comes back from anodized because that's the sort of last look before it goes to the customer version six our current version we duplicated the checked by name and date because guess what the person that checks it coming off the machine is going to be different than the person that checks it post anodize we increased the font size and the spacing to make it easier to understand how to fill out these variance points we did some formatting just to squeeze it up uh, to fit a little bit more on the page, but I think it still has a very organized look to it. And I'm proud of, of this. However, it's occurred to me that this isn't even the way to do it. Because if you stop and you think about what do I want, I don't want this all in paper. I want it all in the computer. So that's the next step. I actually called my Mitutoyo sales rep. They're coming in a few weeks to show us their software that does this. I have no idea if it's going to be a good fit. I'm hoping that it'll work with the height gauge and some of the uh, dial digital micrometers that we've got because that's the key. Now I have the ability to run statistical process control on a larger lot. I can pull this information up. I'm not beholden to a piece of paper that's only in one location. Uh, that's so cool. Folks, I hope you learned something. I am, this makes me so happy. It makes me love what I do. It makes me proud of the parts that we're putting out. It's the systems in place that allow us to have different people running different projects, different machines, different measurement instruments, and know that it's going to happen well. More to come, folks. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.